The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. Now we're all set to look at the spectrum of laser light. For example, is the spectrum, is it a single frequency, or is it multiple frequency, or what have you? In fact, we're going to look at the spectrum of light from two lasers, two helium neon lasers. We have this laser here with external mirrors, and the one over here with internal mirrors. And the way we're going to look at the spectrum is by using the optical spectrum analyzer here. So now let me turn on the, this laser with external mirrors. And the light from the laser then is reflected by this mirror and this mirror. And here it is going right into this optical spectrum analyzer, which is a scanning Fabry-Perot cavity. The output of this spectrum analyzer then goes to an oscilloscope over there. As we can see on the oscilloscope, we have more than one frequency. In fact, we have several frequencies, sometimes three and sometimes even four. The spacing uh, of the modes here is about 270 megahertz, which is consistent with the length of the, of the laser cavity of 56 uh, centimeters. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is see whether the polarization of all these laser frequencies is the same or not. So what I'm going to do is insert a polarizer in the beam and then rotate the, the polarizer. In fact, let me up the gain a little bit here. And let me rotate the polarizer, or the transmission axis of the polarizer, to see whether the polarization is the same for all of them. And as you can see, I can extinguish all of them when the polarization is horizontal, and bring them all up when the polarization is, is vertical. And remember, this is, the, this is the light that was plane polarized. So now we've shown that indeed all the frequencies that come out from this laser, all of them are, are uh, have the same polarization, the polarization in the, in the vertical plane. So now let me take the polarizer out and readjust the gain on the, uh, on the scope. So back now to the, to the three frequencies. You can see that they move around because the, the cavity is drifting in length due to either air currents or, or temperature effects or what have you. And even, in fact, as I speak or you know, as I tap on the cavity, you can see that I can create a mess of the, uh, uh, of the, of the spectrum just by simply uh, tapping. Or if I lean on the table, you can see again that I can make the frequencies uh, wander around. Now, the fact that I have more than one frequency means there is enough gain for several frequencies to, to oscillate due to the fact that the gain medium has, has some uh, bandwidth. Not very huge, but some bandwidth. Now, I can make the laser go at one frequency by, by introducing loss, by simply misaligning the cavity to introduce loss. So you can see here, I've got only two frequencies. And in fact, I'm going to up the sensitivity of the, of the scope because the power goes down when I misalign. You can see here, whoop, I have essentially two, two frequency. And if I add more loss, I can, I can have only one frequency. So in a way, I can run this laser at, 
one frequency, but it's, it's difficult to keep the other one out. And, uh, and then you can see that as I lean on the cavity, I can make this frequency move around. Now, generally, that's not a good way of getting single frequency, and we have other techniques for getting single frequency, which we'll discuss later. For this laser, it's best to, to align it for the uh, highest power out, and, and this way we'll automatically get more than, than one, uh, more than one frequency. And for a lot of applications, this is, uh, this is fine. All right, so to summarize then, uh, this laser that, that is 56 centimeters long, or the cavity is 56 centimeters long, then gives us about three modes, and the spacing between each mode is about 270 megahertz. And all the modes have the same polarization. Now we're ready to look at the, the other laser, the, the laser that has internal mirrors, and also shorter in length. So when we come back, then we look at uh, that laser. Now we're ready to look at the spectrum of this laser here with internal mirrors. The setup for looking at the spectrum is the same as before, but let me just remind you of it. Here's the output of the laser reflected by this mirror, this mirror, into the scanning fabry perot cavity. The output of the cavity then goes onto the oscilloscope over there. Now, as you can see on the scope, and let me adjust the center of the scan, as you can see, we have two big modes, and these are spaced by 680 megahertz, which is consistent with the length of the cavity, of the laser cavity of 22 centimeters, uh, given by the 50, uh, 680 megahertz is given by C over 2L the spacing between longitudinal modes. So these are two longitudinal modes uh, of the laser. This little fella here is a, uh, is a third mode that's coming in at an odd position because the free spectral range of the scanning fabry perot cavity is uh, not quite large enough, so we're getting a wraparound from another, another order. So let's not worry about this one uh, too much. So let's look at essentially the, the two main longitudinal modes uh, of this laser. Now, let's, uh, uh, let's look at now the, uh, the polarization of, uh, of these modes. So now what I'm going to do is take the polarizer, and as we did with the other laser, let's take the polarizer and look at the, uh, the spectrum. Now, if we look at the scope, after I make a slight adjustment of the gain because of the loss in the, in the polarizer. Now what I'm going to do is look at the spectrum of the laser light on the scope as a function of, of polarization. So first, you can see with the polarization set at this angle, you can see essentially we have predominantly one, one mode. And then if I rotate the transmission axis of the polarizer, I can extinguish this mode and, and bring, up, bring up the other one. Now let me just center the mode on the scope so I can bring up the other one. You can see indeed I have single frequency operation on just one mode. So I either have this mode here or if I rotate the polarizer, I can bring up bring up the other one. So again, let me go back to the first one and then to the one over here. Now this is different from what we had with the laser with external mirrors and, and, and the Brewster windows, where we found that all the modes were the same, of the same polarization. Now here we find that one mode is one polarization and, and the other one is polarized orthogonal to the first one. And in fact, this, this explains why the output of the laser wasn't, uh, uh, wasn't 
plane polarized, as, as in the external mirror cavity. Now, this is very interesting that because we have internal mirrors, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the modes are, have orthogonal polarizations, at least adjacent modes have orthogonal polarizations. And in fact, this is a very easy way of selecting single frequency operation by uh, simply placing a polarizer uh, in the beam and then selecting, uh, selecting one, one frequency. Now let's, let's look at uh, the single frequency uh, behavior. If I want to tune the, the laser frequency, I simply blow some air onto, onto the laser to, yeah, I blew too much. Let's do it again. So you can see that I can scan the laser frequency by simply changing the length of the cavity. In this case, I'm cooling off the, uh, uh, the cavity. Now, let me also point out that the line width that you see, the line width that you see here is not the laser line width at all. Uh, the line width that you see here is determined by the scanning fabry perot cavity. The line width, the true line with the laser is, is very narrow. In fact, uh, uh, in principle, it's a fraction of a millihertz. Uh, but because laser jitters and what have you, you'll get a little broadening, but certainly nowhere near as, uh, as wide as what you, see, uh, what you see over here. And again, let me bring up the other mode, uh, the other polarization. And again, this one will also tune across the gain curve of the cavity. I mean, a gain curve of the, uh, of the medium of the, of the laser. So in, in summary then, we've seen that for this laser here, that's about 22 centimeters apart, that we get longitudinal modes of 680 megahertz apart. And the polarization of each mode is, uh, is different. In fact, they have orth adjacent modes have orthogonal polarization. While with this longer laser of length 56 centimeters, we found that the mode spacing was 270 megahertz. Again, it's consistent with the, with the length of the, uh, of the laser. And that the polarization of all the modes was, was identical. Now I want to leave you with, with this puzzle. Why, in this case here, of the laser with internal mirrors, the polarizations of the modes were different, while the one here, the polarization was the same? Well, this is what, this, to answer this one here is easy because of the Brewster windows and the only polarization that can that can laze is the polarization set by the angle of the Brewster windows. But in this case here, we don't have any windows to set the polarization. We only have just two mirrors sealed onto the discharge tube. And we saw that adjacent modes have orthogonal polarizations. So here's a nice little puzzle for you to think about. Now, we're not done yet with laser properties. There are several other experiments that we have prepared for you. So when we come back, we'll show you other aspects of laser behavior.